Hey everyone, it's Clint. Welcome to Sweetcast, and we're going to do a cell phone video because everything has been disrupted uh, for me, but for a good reason. That's because we're fulfilling the campaign uh, for Downcast. So I wanted to show you my... I'm, I'm in the process of getting set up. I'm not completely set up, but people ask about this all the time, uh, which is for fulfillment. Now, at the moment, mm -hmm. Downcast 2 has about 90 fewer backers than Downcast 1. That can obviously change. Part of that was, uh, it was due to a few reasons. One, I think, was interesting is the first book, I sold about 95 digital copies. And I think that that actually made up most of the 95 difference. Downcast 2, I only sold like four or five digital copies which was really interesting to me. So uh, anyway, but campaign's still open. You can still get it technically, uh, though it can't be open much longer. Uh, so here's the books. They're here. Uh, the foil stamping actually looks great this time around, unlike last time where it just looked black. Uh, but this is not about the printing, printing job, uh, essentially. So I got a new, not a new office, but I've converted this room into an office, this bedroom, and the goal was to be able to do everything. This is where the magic happens. Uh, here's uh, my setup at the moment. I just moved everything in here. I used to just be right up against the wall in the other room, uh, but now I get this whole room to do sweet comics, basically, and the videos. Uh, so set up over here, got my computer audio, all that jazz. Uh, and the Dymo printer, this thing's going to be running like crazy. And so I figured I could be over here. I might have to set up one more table in this area. I've got the fan because I'm going to get a bunch of people in here and I want it to be not hot and stinky. <laughs> uh, I had the arcade machine back here. Maybe you saw that in the live stream yesterday. Uh, that'll come back, and I'm going to make this wall just covered with prints and all the goodies from from uh, campaigns and comics and, and everything. So that should be really, really fun. I've got big plans. In the meantime, I've set up this table, and this is not quite put together yet. I'm going to have a signing station, and I think what I'm going to do is actually sign books first and stack them up over here. I'm always putting down these gaming mats uh, when books are touching the table because I want to keep them nice. Uh, I'm a collector personally, so I want books to be collectible quality. When you get them, it just it's going to bother me if they're not. So th there's one thing. Uh, we've got all the extras here, these die cut, die cut stickers. That'll be one. Uh, we've got the bookmarks this time around. Surprise, there's the big reveal. We've got the trading card packs. This is for the VIP tier. VIP tier. And these are just so cool. I think I'm going to do these again. These are wax packs, just like you got 80s and 90s, I guess. I don't know when they were the biggest. Uh, I've seen these from printed from the 80s, early 90s. And it's difficult to find places that do these now. You can kind of see actually the reflection, the, the wax. Technically, I've heard you could throw this in water and it would hold water out. I could be wrong. Uh, wax packs, trading cards, those are for the VIP, VIP tier. Uh, I want to know what people think when you get those. Um, something I kind of want to continue doing because it was just really cool to get those, I thought. Additional trading card. This is for every backer. Now, initially, this Brian Shear piece was just going to be in the Secret History Strata, but it was just so cool that I put it on a card. So this was the Stretch Gold card. Everyone's going to get one of these. Uh, so I've got also a whole closet. This closet's actually bigger uh, than you'd think uh, it's kind of an older house. So these, cl this closet in particular is just really deep. Uh, so I've got all the books here, not all of them. I've got most of the books here. They're what stacked like eight deep, eight tall, something like that. And then they're stacked two boxes deep. I've got some extra over here. 
Then I've got downcast number one in the other room. I'm going to bring those in here for the people that ordered one and two. Gemini mailers. These take up an awful lot of room. Those boxes are huge and they weigh a ton. Uh, and down here I've got, this is not for this campaign. I've got uh, top loaders for people that ordered the print packs. And these are the big, the large prints and uh, the smaller prints that, you know, uh, some backers are going to get that ordered them basically. And yeah, so that's essentially the inventory. So I've got cellophane bags. If you back the first campaign, you'll see what I mean. The idea is we're going to get everything in a bag, stick a board in there. I'll be signing books, get the books in there, and then they're prepackaged in cellophane. Stack the cellophane ones up, and then from there, you all you have to do is stick the cellophane-wrapped packages, or like parcels, and you'll stick those into the Gemini mailers and slap a label on it and then stick it in a post office box, and then we're good to go. Uh, so yeah, sounds pretty simple. It actually can get complicated with shipping labels. So the way that I do it is I will actually print out a tier. For example, the VIP tier, that's what we're working on first. Uh, I'll go through and I'll have the total number of people that back to VIP tier. We'll pack up all those parcels, double check them, count them. And then I go ahead and print shipping labels and get that batch out. So I sort of work through it. I'll pick a tier at a time and uh, ship them out basically in segments like that. Uh, you know, when I tell people I'm shipping out some, you know, 840 packages, people say, oh, that doesn't sound too bad. That, you know, how hard can that be? Uh, it, it is so much work. Uh, just from last time, I know it was, uh, it was crazy. I think it might be not as big of a deal if I was shipping it out over the course of a month. I mean, it would still be a considerable amount of work and you'd want to make sure you're working on it every day, but to get it done within a week or a reasonable amount of time, it's just, it's a ton of work. So I've got some help coming, uh, at least three days, I think I'll have help and yeah, I've got stools back there. So hopefully we can get on both sides of the table. That's just the process at the moment. I realize this is kind of a mess. Usually I'm, I just don't have it organized yet. Okay. Uh, but sign books are going to go there. We'll probably push them all this way. We'll have all the parcels over here. And then we switch out, bring in the Gemini mailers and then get the parcels, put them in the Gemini mailers and, uh, away they go out the door. So that's the process with fulfillment. I don't know if that's interesting or not. <laughs> few thoughts though, as DC comics is firing people. And I think things are about to get uh, even crazier for comic book shops. The cool thing is, is that with comics and publishing, it's not rocket science. It's, it can be a lot of work, but it's, it's really not rocket science. Uh, I can be here as an indie creator doing my, my own thing, putting out two books a year and, you know, I can continue that pace and keep putting books out and doing things myself because I'm not bloated. I don't have all of this staff that I have to pay. I'm not living in New York city, no offense, <laughs> but if you're only making 30 grand a year, you shouldn't be living in New York city. Uh, it just seems crazy to me that Marvel would put their employees through that. Uh, yeah, but this, this is how it works. So, uh, I'm pretty happy today is really, uh, once I see the books here and I'm packing things up and signing books, I realize that I really am living the dream. This is, this is what it's about. Being able to write, write comics, publish comics. I can write exactly what I want. Uh, it's essentially between me and the backers. Uh, and I know that there are pros that want to come over and want to do this. Uh, there's going to be a whole bunch more coming soon. I guarantee it. Uh, and you know, that's okay. Uh, ultimately it comes down to making your fans happy. And I think that, uh, that sort of uh, puts a new perspective on things and, and maybe helps you treat your fans a little bit better uh, when you realize you have to answer to them and not just some, you know, left wing editor or something. Uh, so here it is. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, I'm going to try to read the comments, but it's going to be a little nutty. 
uh, for the next few days. Uh, I'm going to try and just burn through these things. So appreciate it. Uh, and yeah, I can't wait for you guys to get your books. Love to hear what you, your thoughts are. And <clears throat> last but not least, uh, I'm, I'm proud of this book, proud of both the books, Downcast 1 and Downcast 2. I've got ideas for Downcast 3. People are saying, you're launching Fatal. I want, you know, Downcast 3. Um, let me know what you think about Downcast 2. I might do a survey like I did before. And if you want a Downcast 3, we can do a Downcast 3 for sure. So, uh, yeah, let me know, and I'll see you later.